okay welcome back dear students to the tutorial about the chemical applications of group theory this is the third video in the last video we had discussed about the uh, ir active vibration which uh, modes of vibrations are ir active and in that video we had uh, concluded that a vibrational mode will be ir active a vibrational mode will be ir active if the normal mode belongs to the same representation as any one of the cartesian coordinate that is a1 mode is ir active because z transforms as a1 b1 mode is ir active because x transforms as b1 and b2 mode is ir active because y transforms as b2 cartesian coordinates but a2 is always ir inactive in c2v type of molecules because neither of the Cartesian coordinate belongs to A2. This, are, this was our conclusion in the last video. And in this video, we are going to discuss about the uh, prediction of Raman active vibration. Which modes are Raman active? Okay. And you know that a vibration to be Raman active, it should bring about a change in polarizability of the molecule. For IR activity, it is change in dipole moment, and for Raman activity, it is change in polarizability. Change in polarizability is the condition for a mode to be Raman active. And if a molecule is applied to or uh, bring about an applied magnetic electric field, or an electric field is applied to a molecule, a dipole moment is induced. And this induced dipole moment, mu i is equal to alpha into e where alpha is the polarizability and E is the applied field strength. Okay. And this dipole moment mu i can be resolved into three components. Mu i x, mu i y and mu i z can be resolved in three components. And electric field also can be resolved into three components. E x, E y and E z. Okay. And induced dipole moment mu i x is set up not only by EX but also by EY and EZ. Okay, not that point. That is induced dipole moment EX depends not only on EX. Mu IX depends not only on EX but also on EY and EZ. That is, we can write mu IX is equal to alpha XX into EX alpha xy into ey alpha xz into ez where alpha xx is the component of the polarizability in the x direction brought about by ex component of polarizability in x direction brought about by ex ex and alpha xy is the component of the polarizability in x direction brought about by ey Okay, similarly, alpha xz is the component of the polarizability in x direction brought about by ez. Similarly, we can write mu i y is equal to alpha yx into ex, alpha yy into ey, alpha yz into ez, where, where alpha yx is the component of the polarizability in y direction brought about by ex. This is component of polarizability in y direction brought about by ey, and so on. Similarly, mu iz is equal to alpha zx into ex, zy into ey, zz into ez. Okay. Since <coughs> polarizability in one direction is induced by electric field in other direction also, polarizability is referred to as a tensor. That is, polarizability depends on in polarizability in one direction depends on electric field in other direction. Okay, therefore polarizability is denoted as a tensor. It is actually a tensor. And some of these polarizabilities are equal. That is alpha xy and X, yx are equal. Alpha xz and zx are equal. Alpha yz and zy are equal. And also xx, xy, xzz can be written as x square, y, y square, z square. So there are six components for polarizability tensor. They are alpha x square, alpha y square, alpha z square, alpha xy, alpha xz, and alpha yz. 
This is important point. There are six components for polarizability tensor. Alpha x square, alpha y square, alpha z square, alpha xy, alpha xz and alpha yz. Okay. So, probability of transition of IR active modes for a transition to be IR active, probability of transition has six components. Generally, we can write PAB is equal to integral minus infinity to plus infinity. Okay, integral minus infinity plus infinity psi i AB psi f into d2. Okay, that is psi i is the wave function of initial state. I already told you initial state is the ground state for every vibrational mode. Molecules are in ground vibration level that is zero to level. Therefore, psi i is the ground level and the symmetry of ground level that is psi i is always totally symmetric. I told you it is always an A1 representation. And AB is any one of these components x square, y square, z square, xy, xz or yz. Any one of these components come here AB. And psi of is the wave function of final state. And that is the first excited state. That is in vibrational transitions. Vibrational transition always take place from a zeroth level to the first level. And symmetry of the first level, I already told you, is the symmetry of the mode itself. For B2 mode, for B2 mode, I told you, psi i is always A1 for any mode. And psi f is equal to b2 itself okay for for another example if you if b1 mode for v1 mode psi i is equal to a1 for any board psi i is always a1 and psi f is equal to for b1 mode psi f is b1 itself okay that is psi f into d2 okay if any one of these uh, integrals are non-zero if any one of these integrals are non-zero, the vibration will be Raman active. Okay, for condition for Raman activity is to uh, the non-zero of any one of these uh, transition probabilities, these integrals. Okay, and we have already told you, an integral of this type is to be non-zero, the product of these two, that is i i. A, B, A, B means any of these two and psi f should be totally symmetric or it should be an even wave function. Okay. Clear. Into D2. And first uh, uh, we are uh, uh, going to uh, discuss about the symmetric stretching and symmetric bending because both are A1 mode. Symmetric stretching and symmetric bending are A1 mode of vibration that you already know. Okay. Then first we calculate Bx square. We can calculate all any of this. If any of this is non-zero, uh, the transition will be Raman active. First, we look about the Px square. Then integral of minus infinity to plus infinity. Psi i x square psi f d2. And psi i, I told you, a1. And x square. x square, we, what is the symmetry of x square? That we have to look about the uh, character table. Uh, look at this character table of C2V. Then x square here. x square is here. It is A1 representation. Okay. So, so x square is equal to A1. x square is equal to A1. And psi f for A1 mode, psi f is always A1. Psi f. Psi f is the first excited level. And its symmetry is same as the symmetry of the mode itself. Here, symmetric stretching and symmetric bending, the mode is A1 mode. So, psi f is A1. Because therefore this product is direct product of these three is A1. So that is totally symmetric. Therefore this vibration is these two modes that is symmetric stretching and symmetric bending are. Yes, these two modes symmetric stretching and symmetric bending are Raman active. Okay. Next uh, anti-symmetric stretching. Okay. There are three modes for we are discussing about the water molecule. Okay, for water molecule, there are three modes, symmetric stretching, symmetric bending, and next is anti-symmetric stretching. Then, 
we can calculate any of this px square by square bz square bxy bxz pyz i am calculate byz then integral psi i integral minus infinity to plus infinity psi i yz psi f into d to okay psi i is always a1 okay initial state is always a1 for any mode and yz for that we want to look about the character table yz here yz is here and yz is b2 symmetry okay yz is b2 symmetry okay so it is b2 yz is b2 and it is the anti symmetry setting is b2 mode you know 2a1 plus b2 a1 a1 symmetric setting and symmetric bending are a1 mode and anti symmetric setting is b2 okay that we know already then b uh, psi f is the symmetry of the mode itself mode is b2 here so b2 and we know that b2 into b2 is equal to a1 we already know direct product of so two same symmetries are always totally symmetric okay you remember that okay direct product of two same symmetries are always totally symmetric so b2 into b2 is equal to a1 a1 into a1 is equal to a1 that is totally symmetric then this integral will be non zero so this mode will be raman active okay so all the three all the three vibrations in water molecule are raman active they are also ir active and here we can uh, we see that they are also raman active okay so what is our conclusion here for the integral of this type psi i ab psi f d to to be non zero this is always a1 so ab what is ab ab is either x square y square z square or xy xz and yz okay that is ab and psi f is the symmetry of the mode itself so this direct product of this three that is psi i ab ab is this any one of this and psi f to be the totally symmetric the, this ab that means ab is this one and psi f should have same symmetry and psi, symmetry of the psi f is the symmetry of the mode psi f is the first excited state first level and the symmetry of the first level is always the symmetry of the mode itself okay that you already know so we can conclude that for a vibration to be raman active the psi f and at least any one of the binary products binary products that is x square y square z square x z y z and x y any one of these binary products belongs to same species okay the particular vibration will be raman active do you understand okay that is our conclusion is a fundamental transition will be raman active if the normal mode belongs to the same representation as one of the binary products of the cartesian coordinate or their linear combination okay a fundamental transition will be raman active if the normal mode belongs to the same representation as any one of any one of the binary products of the cartesian coordinates that is x square y square z square x z y z and x z that is <coughs> look at this character double of c to v okay but this in the area that is area 4 these binary products are seen in the area 4 look at the area 4 and these binary products x y x z y z x square y square z square okay and these binary products and the mode have same symmetry then they will be raman active therefore in c2v all the modes are raman active okay because x square y square z square is a1 mode x y is a2 mode x z is b1 mode y z is b2 mode all these are raman active do you remember this a2 mode was not ir active a2 node not ir active because ir active depends on this area this cartesian coordinate no, not their binary products x y z so a2 has no cartesian coordinate a2 is not ir active but a2 mode is raman active molecules having c2v symmetry similarly if we uh, look at the c3v character table 
in C3 V set square x square y square plus y square is a linear combination belongs to A1. So in C3 V type of molecule A1 mode is Raman active. A1 mode is IR active also. Okay. E. E mode x square minus y square that is linear combination x y x z y z their combination e mode e mode will be raman active but a2 mode is not raman active because any of this linear combination belongs to a2 a2 mode is also not ir active also because cartesian coordinate also not present in a2 okay that is our conclusion for a vibrational mode to be ir active sorry raman active the any of the binary products that is x square y square z square x y x z y z or their linear combination like this belongs to same representation as that of the vibrational mode and for a vibration to be ir active the the mode have same symmetry as that of cartesian coordinate x y z that symbol it's very simple to predict a mode is raman active or ir active okay only look at for uh, for ir activity look at xyz coordinate if the mode belongs to xyz coordinate that is ir active for raman activity look at the binary products x square y square z square xy xz and yz if any of this uh, any of these binary products belong to the uh, mode then mo that mode will be raman active okay I think uh, uh, you have understand what I say. Okay, uh, read the textbook well and explore more. Thank you.